Okay, so we finished uh, Bulgaria and Montenegro. Let's take a look at, you know, let's take a look at Greece and Gibraltar. Um, I have to say off the bat, probably Greece is the likely winner here. But let's take a look at Gibraltar and their lineup and their 23 players. So, right off the bat, we will have, for goalkeeping, we will have Kuling, Banda, and Hankins. For defense, we're going to have a lot of defense, actually. We're going to have Lopez, Santos, Ayman, Muelli, and we will have Cipollina. For uh, left backs, we will have Olivero, Berotto, Cipollina, again, I think they're brothers, of uh, by five years. And at the right side, or right back, we'll have Julie, Jolie, Sergeant, and Ronan. In the central midfield, we will have Hartman, Tortilla, Torria, sorry, Pozo, Ballarino, Bedr, Elhamdi, Walker, Combs, and Hernandez. And in attack, we'll have Michael Yumi. Tejai de Bar, Bar, El Casquero, Lee Casquero, and Reese Stich. So this is the 23 players that were selected for Gibraltar. We have here also under official Twitter handle and Twitter account, they have listed also the 23 players here. So these will be the 23 players that will play against Greece and the Netherlands. Good luck to you guys, Gibraltar. You'll need it. All right. With that, let's take a look at Gibraltar's um, formation. So here in, in this particular formation, Gibraltar against Bulgaria, they've lost 5-1. Here they played 5-3-2 against Bulgaria, and they've lost 5-1. Not good results. Another match here was against actually Georgia. Of course, also Georgia is expected to win against Bul uh, Gibraltar or Gibraltaric. Here Gibraltar is playing 5-4-1, which is not a bad idea. Because I think they thought Georgia was stronger than they should be. And they went in a more defensive approach. Uh, here they lost 2-1. It looks like in majority of their matches they are losing. So don't be depressed. Because maybe today is going to be their day and they will win. So let's take a look here. Here they lost from <laughs> North Macedonia 4-0. Right? And here they played 4 4 2. So they wanted to go on the attacking front for a bit. It looks like here um, Macedonia really uh, brought it in this game. Looks like someone put it on goal. Torria put it on goal here uh, to cap it off with the even number 4 Macedonia. It looks like, in my opinion, and they are the probably the weakest team in the group. So probably they will want to concede the least goals, hope for ties, and hope for catching someone off guard and scoring a goal and winning the game like that. So yeah. Information. I don't know. Most of the players are unknown, but let's take a look at my prediction for Georgia here. For me, I think I think against Greece, who's not the strongest of the group, but they're not the weakest. They're in the middle, or maybe top in the top middle. I think they should play five in the back. They should frustrate Greece with five defenders. They should frustrate Greece with defending, and hopefully. They can play on the counter, and I think if they frustrate Greece enough in defense and keep their composure in defense, 
and try to eliminate some goals, they might actually come out of this game with a tie or if luck on their side, because in football you need a little bit of luck, a, cup, a lot of faith, and, you know, effort. If they have a little bit of luck on their side, they might just win it. If they frustrate Greece enough to the point where they lose composure and they grab a counterattack and grab a, a goal, um, they might just win it. But I think against Greece, Gibraltar, I think their chances are very slim to be Greece. It's not zero, but very, very low. Greece is probably going to come in this match to win it because they have a couple of other teams in this group that are a lot stronger than they are and a lot stronger than Gibraltar. So they're going to come in the game. I think Gibraltar is easy points. If Gibraltar goes five in the defense, three in the midfield, two in the attack, hopefully what they can do is frustrate them in the defense do a counter-attack, long ball to the two attackers up front. Um, and hopefully one of them scores. So that is my hypothesis. This is what I hope they would do. But let's see. Here in goalkeeper will have Banda uh, after looking a while. He seems like he is the best option for goalkeeping on the Gibraltar team. No offense to the other goalkeepers. They are not at his level. I mean, yeah, let's leave it at that. In the back, or the five defenders, will have Boreto, Olivero, Lopez, Santos, and Ronin. These five, looking at their stats, they are the, one of the best fives on the team that can actually play in this formation. Um, all the other players are either too old, they don't have a lot of matches, nor data, nor statistics that I can look at to see how bad or good they are. But their statistics is so low that these players overshine them. Hopefully, hopefully we'll get more statistics on them and, and see. But these were the five that I saw a lot of statistics on, and they looked like the five that can pull the five in the back, in my opinion. In the midfield, Hernandez, El Hamdi, and Combs. These three midfielders, I think again, through the stats, through the games they played, and some of the assists they made and goals they made and appearances they made, they were the top three midfielders on the team that I think should start in this match. Um, he might probably play the older players. I don't quite know their names, but he might play the more older players and experienced players just for the experience and hopefully to defend against Greece in, the, in their final third. In attack, up in attack, I think they should have to maybe, maybe even what they can do is bring one, uh, bring Yomi here as a shadow striker and the bar as the central forward target man. And they will change the formation from a 5-3-2 to a 5-3-1-2 uh, that can flip from 5-3-1-2 to 5-3-2. Um, maybe. Um, but at the front, I think the bar and Yomi should be up there. I saw the bar stats. He has a lot of appearances. He had a lot of goals and a lot of assists. And Yomi had the same stats. So I think these two are by far, they should be there to go to strikers right now. Um, so hopefully one of them, between the two of them, one of them can get, grab, grab a goal for them. Uh, and they have good assists, so either they will assist to one another or they can finish in front of goal. Uh, Greece is not going to be easy, to be honest with you. They have good defense, they have a good midfield, and they have a good goalkeeper. Maybe a, a bit shaky, but it's going to be tough for Gibraltar. I think a win for Gibraltar is to come out with a tie and then hope they play other teams that might think they're too easy to beat and then grab the win. But I think... Greece will come out aggressive. They want to win this. This is the first match in the group, and it's against Gibraltar. No one get angry. Gibraltar's easy points to any team uh, on the level of Greece, uh, Bulgaria, Denmark, Sweden. If they have to play against Gibraltar, this is easy points. You have to play, get the points, get out of there. Um, so they're going to come out aggressive for sure. So this is my hypothesis. This is what I think. Hopefully, you'll see what happens uh, an hour before the match. Here, I want to also take a look at 
these are statistics. Look at uh, Banda, right? From his statistics, it's very low, but he's the better option of the, out of the two goalkeepers that I've seen. Um, they even have lower statistics. Uh, this guy here, 26 years old, Colgan. If we go to his statistics, it's, um, it's not very pretty. You see, it's not very pretty. I mean, there's no conceding, but there's not a lot uh, enough matches played, um, unfortunately. So uh, this was why I picked right. I think from previous matches he played, and I think he was all right. Here I picked this fellow here. He has some good as uh, goals, right? He made some assists. I think from his stats, he looked like the better option, in my opinion, uh, for this team. The, the team doesn't have a lot of options, right? I'm just showing you how I'm, I'm thinking about this. Julia was thinking of, of him to play, but the other person, Ronan, he had more goals, he had more assists, and, and it seemed like maybe Ronan would be the better option, unfortunately. Um, Alhamdi, same thing, look at this, goals, goals, assists, and so forth, he even played a couple of minutes here and there, so I think uh, out of the midfield, he was why I picked him, and the bar, you have to see this guy, look, 12 games, 3 goals here, 14 goals in, in the Gibraltar League, most of the people that play in Gibraltar don't even get this much goals when they play, so I thought he was the go-to person, so... I think Gibraltar's option, like I said, go out, five in the back, three in the middle, two in the front, and frustrate Greece until they can't handle it no more. Do a counter-attack and hope your two attackers score it. Uh, I think that is how Gibraltar should go against this match, to be honest with you. If we take a look at um, the standings, Right, uh, where's Gibraltar? Gibraltar is going to have France and Netherlands and Ireland. So Greece really has no option. They have to go out, win this game. Because Gibraltar is probably the easy points in this group. Um, Ireland is going to cause a problem. Netherlands is definitely going to cause a problem. And France will definitely cause a problem. And probably France and Netherlands are the ones that are going to get out of this group anyways. Um, so I think for Ireland and Greece, Gibraltar is a must win. And then between Greece and Ireland, they have to. One of them has to beat the other. Um, if they don't, uh, it's going to be very difficult to to uh, to do something against France and Netherlands at this point. So that's why I'm saying Gibraltar. The only option is to get a tie in this game. Hopefully, grab a late winner or something like that, and call it a day. Because the other matches you will play against Netherlands and France. It doesn't look up. All right. So that was Gibraltar. Let's take a look at Greece. Because uh, um, I like Greece. Well, I used to like Greece when I was younger. Um, when Samaras was playing. But we'll, we'll take a look at Greece very shortly. All right. Let's open here. Transfer market. And take a look at the uh, transfer market here. Let's take a look at the goalkeepers. They have... All right, I'm not going to be able to pronounce half of these people's names because they have some fascinating stuff in there. Um, the goalkeeper will be Valachia Domus, and we will have Gregus Athlancidis and Alexandros Pashalekis. Oh my gosh. So these are the three goalkeepers. I think if I were to pick someone, uh, let's, let's go through the names and then go to the formation and, and then go through that. Um, in uh, the defense, we will have, in the defense, we will have uh, Mavro Panos, Shatides Cox, Retsos, Collier Kairis, Tezavelas, Tesemekas, Tesemekas, Gianolis, um, we'll have Bad Baldock, the easiest name in there. Rota, well, also easy. And uh, these are the defensive players, to be honest with you. In the midfield, we'll have Seopis, Papanikoloa, Korbelis, Boshalakis, Bacasetas, Contantelias, Pelekas, 
Mantalos and Fortunis. In the attacking players, we're gonna have Masuras, Limonios, Chatezevigenis. I'm making faces here. Pavlidis, Giacomakis, and finally we'll have Leonidis. Leonidis. Oof. Oh man, very hard to pronounce last names. Some of them are very easy, some of them are like very hard. Anyways, these are the 23 players that were selected for Greece. So let's take a look at their previous formation and take a look at uh, how they played. All right. So Greece here against Kosovo. Uh, they played 4 3 3 uh, against a 4 2 2. And they uh, managed to beat Kosovo 2 0. And I think to beat Kosovo, Kosovo is a team that is, in my opinion, stronger than Gibraltar. So if they can beat Kosovo 2 0, I think if they go out aggressive in the first match, they can probably beat Gibraltar 2-0 or more. Anything can happen in football, but it's just a hypothesis, right? Here they played against Cyprus and they lost. So, like I said, anything can happen in football. Uh, for Cyprus to beat Greece is like... <laughs> I mean, who would have thought that? Um, but here they played 4-3-3 against a 4-3-3. Uh, Cyprus against Greece and Cyprus managed to win. So... Maybe there's hope for Gibraltar, right? But I think Cyprus, compared to Gibraltar, Cyprus is stronger than Gibraltar. But they're weaker in comparison to Kosovo. So they're in the middle between Kosovo and Gibraltar. Um, so Greece should have won, but they did not. So that was that. Here Greece played against Northern Ireland, and they beat them 3-1. So uh, they played 4-3-3 against the 5-3-2. Uh, as you can see, they keep playing 4-3-3. They keep playing with this information. So, in my opinion, they should play 4-3-3 in the coming match as well. And I think they will play 4-3-3. Unless something changed, the head coach or something like that changed, probably they're going to play 4-3-3. They're comfortable with that. They should play. So let's take a look at the formation. In this formation here, I picked the goalkeeper. He will be Valachidemos. And he looks like he is the strongest out of the three goalkeepers that were selected. And as our left back, I am between two players. I think he's going to pick Tesemikas just because he plays in Liverpool. His form was not so great so far. He only played 14 matches. A couple of those were in the League Cup, FA Cup, and so forth. And a couple of them were in the league. Now, if you look at Gaio Noelis, he played a lot of more matches. And he's, in my opinion, in more form than the Semikas. So I, that's why I picked him over the Semikas. But I think either or playing here will be something um, of a decision. Uh, if it were me, I would probably play... Giannolis, just because of his on form and so forth. Desemekas, again, he only played like 14 games. We'll take a look at the stats later. In the right back, I will say Baldock. Baldock looks like he's more on form than the other right backs. And in center defense, we'll either have Mavropoenos or Retosos. Either or. I think they're both on par. It just depends who the head coach will pick out of these two. I think they both should be uh, in this game. One of them should be starting at least. Or both of them should be starting. We'll see. And their counterpart on the left side will be Chades de Yacos. Uh, this player, he's also a good central back. And I think he also deserves to start the match. So between these three players, one of, one of them, unfortunately, is going to be on the bench. But... All three of them deserve to play in the match. Um, and you never know. Maybe after the... If they put some goals inside of um, Gibraltar, maybe they will put player in to try them out. So maybe uh, in the beginning of the match, the Semikas won't play. If they're beating Gibraltar 2-0 in the first half, maybe the Semikas can make an appearance. Who knows? Let's see. Or maybe they're going to be losing and they need to put more attack. Uh, we don't know. So... But this will be the four in the back. In the middle, I think 
uh, we would have Lemanios, Pelecas, and Constantilias. Constantilias. I think the three of them in the midfield are superb. And I think between the three of them, they can do shots, they can do assists, they, they can do good passes, and I think they can feed the attacking trio. The attacking trio is going to be Leonidas and Pavelidis. I think there is a typo here, to be honest with you. Um... I'm not sure who was my right wing, to be honest with you. Uh, let's take a look at the names, to be honest here. Um, so I looked at this guy, Lemonius. I think, yeah, probably that's the name I wanted to spell. So uh, Leonidas and Lemonius will be here. So, like I said, we'll look at the stats. Here is the uh, Pavelidis. The central forward and if we look at his uh, performance he's played 18 matches um, in the dutch league for az alkamar right he's gold 18 goals made 14 assists uh, he played in the conference league three goals three appearances so his stats are very good in terms of scoring goals and making assists so i think he should make a good appearance there the other player leonidas this fellow here if we look at his stats, I mean, in the SL playoff one, he only played one match, didn't do much. But if you take a look at the Super League one, he played 26 matches, made five goals, and made three assists. And you see the trend there. He also, 20 games, four goals, one assist, 17 games, two goals, 19 games, five goals. So I think when he gets his chances, he takes his chances. Uh, and he does some assists. So that's why I put him on the right wing. So he can help out with the crossing to uh, the center forward. Limonis, I think for me, I think he deserves to be as the left wing uh, because look at his stats. He, in the again, in the Dutch league, right? Uh, while he was playing with this particular team here in the first tier of the, the Dutch league, he played 33 matches, made eight goals and made two assists. And he's a left winger. Uh, I think his stats speak for himself. He's probably one of the better attackers on the on the on the team. So that's why I chose this particular guy. And I believe I had some thoughts about this particular one, Giaka He also looks promising, but um, if you look at the goals, really uh, the amount of matches played and the amount of goals played and assists. Mm, I don't know probably he, he's really good when he was playing when he was playing in this team here um in the second tier of the dutch league uh, he played 30 match and made 26 goals which is pretty decent um almost almost a goal every match um he's four off uh being a goal every match but he made 26 goals and one assist um so i think we will probably see him on the pitch as well uh, but I think the other three that I've picked, uh, between them, they have better options. They have a lot of uh, more assists, and they have considerable good amount of goals. So I think that's that's the reason there. Um, the only thing I'm pretty upset about is that this guy is not part of the Greek team no more. Kia Karis Papadoblos. He was amazing central back. Um, unfortunately, he's not part of the greek team anymore i'm not sure if he retired probably not he's only 31 years old and he's a central back they play for a while i'm, I'm pretty shocked that uh, papadoulos is not part of the team unfortunately he would have been a good addition to the defender players i would probably picked him over a few and of course i have to bring out my favorite greek player Ger Gergis Samaras. I love this guy. Fortunately, he's retired. I mean, if he was not retired, uh, pff, we will get him for Greece. Uh, I'm not joking. We will get him to play for Greece, for sure. Um, but yeah, I love this player, so I wanted to showcase him. He was probably my favorite player in Greece and probably the only player or the first player I knew. And then Papadopoulos was the second. 
So this is my two favorite player for movies. Uh, but let's see. Maybe I get more interesting players uh, watching some of these matches this week and so forth. Here, I'm actually not going to play this. I'm going to maybe share it in the description. Uh, Greece is announcing their new T-shirt. Uh, I mean, uh, if I just mute it, I mean, the T-shirt um, looks um, not nice, in my opinion. Yeah, look at that. I know Greece uh, to wear the blue uh, color, but uh, this uh, white with fading blue, um, it's not my liking. I wish they went back to their uh, original jersey, the blue. But I'll leave this in the description so you can take a look at it. Um, it was something nice I saw. But in terms of injuries and other stuff, uh, nothing much here. And this is my hypothesis. Let's take a look what happens. Hopefully, before the match by one hour, the lineup will come out and I will do a review between the formation and my formation and we'll close from there. Maybe I'll give a hint to scoreline, uh, but that will be it. So, as always, thank you for watching. See you in the next one.